Hey guys, this video is about tachometers, small engine tachometers. Uh, I'm going to show you the one I use, I'll show you how I use it. Um, I recommend using tachs. You have a lot of people out there who are very familiar with two strokes and they know what they sound like and here's my take on that. I do a service to people, a lot of them friends and family, but I do a service to people and most times I take money for the service or trade, barter, whatever. When you're going to get compensation for a service, make sure the service is right. And when it comes to chainsaws or power equipment, especially two strokes, they're very easy to blow if you set the RPMs too high. So usually too high means a couple of things. It means it's either too lean, most cases, or there's an air leak, or being too high, the bearings aren't designed to take it and they can explode. So most times it's lean out conditions or it's just vacuum leaks, things like that. So causing a lean condition. So let me show you what I use. The DTI 20K, love it. It goes up to 19,900 RPM. It's got a button on the top so that you can hit the high RPM. And I've got a piece of equipment here. Let me shut off the radio. I'm an NPR junkie. I listen to public radio all the time. So let me shut that off, hold on. That's better. Okay, I like public radio. I listen to public radio all the time. Anyway, let me take you out. This is the Echo from Hell, the one we had before that we didn't know if we wanted to fix or not. Guy didn't want to spend $100 for OEM parts, so I ended up buying a Chinese kit. Here's what was on there. Carburetor didn't even have the right parts on it, or it was missing parts anyway. So I ended up buying a Chinese kit, got a coupon. It was $9.99 plus tax, so it was about $10.62. Not a bad deal. What I had to do to this, I had to put a new starter rope in it because the starter rope was bad. Uh, there was no handle, so I actually have some old Echo starters laying around. If anyone needs some old Echo starters, let me know. I have a bunch of them. Okay. So put the carburetor on, wired it in. It comes with a vent, the fuel lines, all that. So let me start her up. Okay. Now that it's running, I want to check out and see what the idle RPM is. Now on this particular piece of equipment, the manual says 3,000 RPM roughly is the idle and 11 to 12,000 RPM is max. So I'm going to turn on the tack. Wait a second till it goes in. Okay, put it next to the plug. A little low, so I'll turn it up a little bit. Okay, that's good. All right, now the fun part. I'm gonna try and hold the camera, or steady the camera. It's gonna be fun to do. Well, you know what I'll do, guys? Trust me. I'm gonna put the camera. Okay. So, I'm holding it. Okay, and the feature of this tachometer now, I can hit the recall, 10223. Now the recommended RPM for this is 11 to 12,000, but I'll be honest, a 20 year old piece of equipment, 10-2, it's gonna cut shrubs. I'm not gonna change it. So we had the regular idle, which you can see, I'll turn it back. Thirty-one, thirty-two. it's idling good and the high RPM, try it one more time. Okay, we'll hit it again, see if it increased any or decreased any. 10 to, yeah, about the same, 10 to 60. So you know what? That's a win-win for me. Win for the customer, because now he has a carburetor that's adjusted properly. Win for me, because I know it's adjusted where it's not gonna over-rev and destroy anything. By not over-revving, I'll tell you what I did as well on the mixture screws. I actually took the high mixture screw here, 
I got it to rev nice and high, and then I backed it off an eighth of a turn, just to give it a little bit of richness, okay? You don't want it to run so that it's the full blast, as high as it'll go with the high screws. People, they do that by mistake. They take the high screw, and when it's revving, they rev it up so they get the highest reading they can get on the high screw by ear. You can't do that, because it could run lean, and it'll run over the max RPM. Use a tachometer. Please, if you're going to do work for someone, a friend or something, especially a piece of equipment that's expensive, use a tachometer. This one here is on sale all the time at Amix uh, for about 100 bucks. I know it's expensive, but you know what? Charge $10 every time you work on something to, to do a tack check, and 10 pieces of equipment, it pays for itself. It really does pay for itself. And it, it works on four strokes. It works on four strokes, two strokes, two cylinders, one cylinder, four cylinder, eight cylinder. It works on everything. You could use it on your car if you want. So it's a very good instrument. I really recommend the DTI 20K Tack. I'm going to call this guy up. Hopefully, he can come by, pick it up, give me my money so I can buy lunch tomorrow, and we'll have a nice day. So that's it for now, guys. Like, subscribe. I'm over 100. I appreciate that from all you guys over 100 i'm at 101 now so like subscribe comments suggestions anything you want to see let me know but at this point this job is considered done so we'll talk to you soon guys bye bye